Emmet Ash uh, 2018 in San Diego, and there have been several um, abstracts and presentations related to new findings in multiple myeloma. Uh, this data from the a phase 3 trial looking at the combination of daratumumab and lenalidomide dexamethasone in patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, demonstrating an improved progression-free survival over lenalidomide and dexamethasone. Uh, this clearly is uh, one of the first trials to demonstrate the benefit of monoclonal antibodies used in the beginning, right up front after diagnosis. So clearly the, we have to wait and see what the long-term results show as well, but it certainly demonstrates the feasibility, the efficacy and the safety of that approach. There were also three different presentations looking at adding uh, daratumumab to either botasimib lenalidomide dexamethasone or botasimib cyclophosphamide dexamethasone or ixazomib lenalidomide dexamethasone, all showing very high rates of response and depth of response. So again, highlighting that we have the potential to combine a fourth drug uh, to, co to create a quadruplet that's highly efficacious and is uh, tolerable. Now the question that comes up is whether this is something that can translate to routine practice and I think that will depend on the phase 3 trials which we hope will start reading out in the next few years. Obviously those use of those quadruplets will also depend on our ability to give the treatment for a limited duration of time and then stop treatment. There was also long term follow up from several relapsed um, myeloma trials again demonstrating that the monoclonal antibody combinations and the new generation of proteasome inhibitor uh, combinations are all highly effective in the uh, relapsed uh, patient population as well. Uh, there is also um, an interesting studies looking at the role of continued use of dexamethasone. So there was a phase three trial that limited the dexamethasone to nine months compared to giving it continuously and showing that there was no difference uh, in the uh, continuous versus just giving it for nine months which certainly can be a practice changing uh, move because now you are getting the same efficacy without subjecting the patient to additional toxicity. There's also an exciting set of data from the uh, CAR-T trials. Even though they are all small trials, they all consistently show high rates of response uh, and the larger ones have longer follow-up now. Uh, and we, what we have seen is that if you respond to a CAR-T cell therapy, it, the responses can last for over two years uh, and this is quite a remarkable finding considering these, many of these patients had no other treatment options. Uh, there is also data looking at the uh, bispecific T-cell engager or a bite platform that also is quite effective um, in this uh, patient population. Uh, again, small studies but proof of principle and looks like an exciting thing uh, looking forward. It's also some data from targeted therapies. So there's data with uh, Selinexor, which is a nuclear transport protein inhibitor, combining that with daratumumab, uh, and also with pomalidomide, both combinations showing significant efficacy. So one study looked at combining uh, venetoclax, which is a BCL2 inhibitor, with carfilzomib, again with very high rates of response.